for it. It's time for member statements. The member from Simcoe Gray. Uh, speaker, I rise today on behalf of the town of Wasaga Beach, its citizens, and the thousands of visitors and tourists that come to the community every year. The government's refusal to properly maintain the beachfront areas is negatively affecting the economic well-being of this beautiful community. Wasaga Beach is recognized in the Guinness Book of World Records for having the longest freshwater beach in the world. This designation will be lost if the beach is not cleaned up and maintained properly. Many areas of the beach are now overgrown with weeds and other vegetation, and many public parking areas are in a state of disrepair. Mr. Speaker, Wasaga Beach does not have traditional industry for jobs. The community relies on attracting visitors to its beachfront for economic growth and jobs. The current state of much of the beach area does not present an attractive picture for visitors to the community. In addition, washroom facilities at the beachfront have needed upgrades for many years. The province uh, has promised new washrooms on a number of occasions, but is not delivered. These investments are needed to help grow the economy in Wasaga Beach and ensure the beach continues to be one of the most popular tourist destinations in the entire province. Many citizens and visitors have signed my petition asking for the beach to be maintained properly. It's time the government acted on this situation. The current state of the beachfront is unacceptable and must be cleaned up. The residents of Wasaga Beach are waiting, and they know that the election is just around the corner, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Windsor to come see. To speak today about an overdue honour for Ontario's Silver Cross mothers. Speaker, these are the women who have lost sons or daughters in combat while serving their country, Canada. The Silver Cross is also known as the Memorial Cross. It was instituted way back in 1919. Other provinces have come up with an innovative way of showing respect for the families of our military personnel who have paid the supreme sacrifice. It's a license plate known as the Memorial Cross Plate or the Silver Cross Plate. Saskatchewan introduced them back in 2014. British Columbia made them available last year. Here's what Rear Admiral Art MacDonald, Commander, Maritime Forces Pacific, had to say about them. The Canadian Armed Forces are delighted and humbled that the government of British Columbia has decided to honour those who have died as a result of their military service to Canada and the sacrifice of their loved ones who were left behind in such a meaningful way. This Memorial Cross license plate will be a daily reminder of the sacrifices members of the Canadian Armed Forces and their families make for their country, and I welcome this thoughtful initiative. Speaker, the medal itself used to be given to just mothers and widows, but recent changes now allow Canadian Armed Forces personnel to designate up to three Memorial Cross recipients. If three license plates were issued to each family, it wouldn't break the bank in Ontario. My constituent, Theresa Charbonneau, lost a son, 23-year-old Andrew Grennan, on the 3rd of September in 2008 while serving with the PPCLI in Afghanistan. She deserves to have an Ontario Silver Cross license plate, just like the parents in Saskatchewan and British Columbia. I call on this Liberal government to do the right thing and introduce these license plates in Thank Ontario. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, it's my pleasure to rise today as a member of Trinity Spadina and as, as an immigrant who, has born, who was born in China to acknowledge China's National Day on October 1st. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, I had an opportunity to accompany our Premier and the Consul General of People's Republic of China, His Excellency He Wei, and my colleagues, the Honourable Members from Scarborough Agent Court, Scarborough Rouge River, Toronto Danforth, and the Chinese community leaders to raise the Chinese flag here at Queen's Park. Mr. Speaker, in the past five years, our Premier Kathleen Wing has led two successful delegations to China, and she is going on her third, uh, third one this coming November. This government continues to strengthen the important relationship between this province and China. On September 25th, I had the opportunity to meet with the founder of Alibaba, Mr. Jack Ma, at the Gate Gateway 17 conference. More than 3,000 small business owners and entrepreneurs went to the conference to explore new partnership and opportunities in the Chinese market. Prosper prosperous trade relations between China and Ontario will continue to provide good-paying jobs and business opportunities for all Ontarians. Mr. Speaker, this province would not have achieved so much in the past 150 years without the hard work of Chinese Ontarians. Please join me to thank them all for what they've done for this province. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you.
Speaker. Further member statements, the member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Yes, uh, thank you, Speaker. As a proud graduate of Conestoga College, I stand to recognize one of the province's leading post-secondary institutions as they celebrate 50 years of equipping students in Waterloo Region and beyond with the tools to open doors to a bright future and a world of opportunities. Founded in 1967, Conestoga College is a leader in polytechnic education, offering education and training opportunities to directly serve and meet the needs of our labour market. In meeting those needs, Conestoga helps students fuel our local economy as they grow roots, work, invest, and raise families in our region's community. Almost half of our area's workforce, 193,000 people, have been educated at Conestoga College, and of course I am proud to say I am one of those speakers. Yeah, yeah. With over 13,000 students across eight campuses, 65% of Conestoga graduates stay in the area, contributing over $2.3 billion each year to our regional economy. Conestoga College also offers opportunities for career growth of those re-entering the workforce or wanting to expand job skills through ongoing leadership and continuing education. Conestoga College has had a hand in making Waterloo Region the internationally renowned center of technology and innovation it is today, with graduates going to work in local companies such as BlackBerry, Christie Digital, Linamar, and OpenText, to name a few. Speaker, we are indeed proud to have Conestoga College in Kitchener, Conestoga, and we congratulate them on, a, on this significant milestone of 50 years. 50 years of providing an education to students locally and all over the world, and 50 years of building communities and careers that help shape the future of our great province. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, and congratulations. Thank you. Member Stevens, member from Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I'd like to rise to recognize World Teacher Day. On this day every year, we celebrate the incredible work that our teachers do. I know that in Niagara, we have some of the best teachers in the province, and I'm proud to say that not only my wife is a teacher, but also a principal, but my two daughters, Chantelle's a teacher, and Tara works with the special needs kids at the Catholic School Board, and Jacqueline is a student at Brock. I want teachers to know that the tremendous amount of work and extra hours they put in doesn't go unnoticed. They are not just employees of school boards. They are volunteers, mentors, counselors, coaches, and friends. There's not many professions that have a profound impact on our community, like teachers. This is why it's so important as legislatures, as MPPs, we stand up for our teachers in this province. With that being said, teachers can only do so much with the resources they are given. In Ontario, we have seen reduced class sizes, resources, sweltering classrooms, and violence, violence in our schools. We have teachers come into my office and tell us they have experienced violence from students and has had a devastating effect on their lives. These are issues that must have, ta have action taken on them. I know that my colleagues and I will continue to fight and bring awareness to the issues facing teachers so we can assure that they are able to do the best job that they can for our children. As we celebrate World Teachers' Day, we must ensure that every child in the province has the opportunity to get a good education. Thank you. We know that oh, sir. for First Nations children to ensure that they have the same educational opportunities as all Thank children you. in the province of Ontario. Thank you. For all across Thank the you. province, for the wonderful work they do. Thank you. Thank you. You didn't hear me. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have been louder. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Etobicoke Centre. Thanks very much, Speaker. Speaker, one of the things that makes Etobicoke Centre such a wonderful community to live in is the people who work so hard, who volunteer, who give their time, their money to help make other people's lives better. Since I was elected Speaker, I've carried on a yearly tradition of recognizing these people who've made a positive difference in the lives of others um, in, at my annual Community Recognition Awards. The awards are given to people living, working, or volunteering in Etobicoke Centre who may have made a real difference in the lives of other people in our community. The recipients recognized come from a range of ages, Speaker, and they come from a range of backgrounds, and they contribute in a range of ways, from caring for seniors to engaging youth to volunteering in their parish. And I'm pleased to announce 
announce that the nomination for the 12th Annual Community Recognition Awards are now open. There are a number of categories to be nominated for. Outstanding volunteer service to the community, outstanding volunteer service to seniors, outstanding volunteer service to the community by youth, and outstanding service by professional staff, employers, or employees. Nominations can be submitted to my constituency office at 416 234 2800 or by emailing me, and the deadline for submissions is November 15th, so I encourage everyone watching to submit a nomination for someone in our community. After we've collected the nominations, a committee of volunteers will select the recipients, and I will have the opportunity to recognize these folks at the Community Recognition Awards on January 14th during my annual New Year's levy. I'm honored to represent our community in Etobicoke Centre, honored that we have so many wonderful individuals. Let's recognize them. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements to the member from Sarnia Lamb. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I stand today to recognize that thanks to the work of members of this legislature, this Monday, October 9th, will mark the first official Panda Pans Awareness Day in Ontario. Pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder associated with streptococcal uh, infections, or PANDAS for short, and pediatric acute onset neuropsychiatric syndrome, or PANS, are serious illnesses that are impacting the lives of young children across our great province. The Panda PANS term refers to the sudden onset of debilitating symptoms, including obsessive compulsive disorder, tics, anxiety, depression, irritability, and regressive behavior in children that cannot be explained <coughs> by any other neurological or medical disorder, but that often occurs following a common strep infection. Unfortunately, Panda Pans is often misdiagnosed due to the lack of awareness, both by the public and the medical community. The treatment for Panda Pans vary by the needs of the child, but they do exist and may be as common as antibiotics or anti-inflammatory medications. But the condition must first be diagnosed correctly. Mr. Speaker, it is imperative that there be greater public awareness of this serious children's disease. Recently, I introduced Bill 64 in this legislature calling on the government <clears throat> to strike an advisory council on Panda Pans to advise the Minister of Health on research, diagnosis, treatment, and education relating to this disorder. It's my hope that the members of this House will support this important initiative, and that by October 9, 2018, the advisory council will have started its important work on this debilitating problem. Thank well done, you. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Ajax Pickering. From Ajax Pickering. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Both Catholic and public school boards have been recipients of Ontario Grown and Durham Farm Fresh scrumptious apples for all Ajax and Pickering schools from uh, myself and our MPP team on our 10th MPP anniversary this very day of this very week. I thank you for supporting us as your provincial member in the legislature, and I say thank you to each of you. These apples are enjoyed by our principals, all of the great teachers, and all of the hard-working support staff. This was completed with a personalized letter to each principal and their school on Tuesday and Wednesday and today of this week. It has taken us a total of three days to deliver all of them. Also this week in Ajax was our MP's 10th anniversary of personally distributing packages of Dad's cookies, which are always delicious for a resident running to the GO train station first thing in the morning on the way to work or school. This is a thank you to everyone. We started this morning at 5.45 a.m. and we ran out about 8.05 after delivering some 3,500 packages of Dad's cookies. If you are from Ajax Pickering, Whitby, Oshawa, or for Mr. Leal, even Peterborough, or anywhere else, and caught the GO train station in, in Ajax, you received a special treat this morning. Finally, I just wanted all of the Ajax Pickering schools, educators and staff to know how much they are appreciated and how much their efforts to educate our children are truly appreciated. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> member statements, a member from Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. College and university campuses across Ontario continue to create communities that build and develop loving knowledge. It's present in the classrooms from the contributions of students and certainly from the expertise of faculty members. In Ontario's 21st century economy, Speaker, both the public and private sectors are looking for the most effective means to apply this knowledge to the benefit of our local communities. Partnerships between universities, colleges and local businesses have the greatest potential to develop these solutions, in particular the University of Ontario Institute of Technology 
and Trent Durham's campus in the city of Oshawa. An ambitious initiative to effectively apply the knowledge being developed on campuses is the City of Oshawa's Teaching City Speaker. It combines the knowledge generating capacity of the University of Ontario Institute of Technology and the Civil Engineering Department at the University of Toronto to de develop modern solutions to 21st century challenges. Through this initiative, Oshawa's workforce will be equipped speaker with adaptable skills necessary to tackle modern challenges. If partnerships like Oshawa's Teaching City continue to be fruitful, there's no end to what Durham's local communities can achieve. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements. It's therefore